Sue, Teenage Youth in Asia. Premieres Wednesday, July 26 at midnight on Adult Swim. Next day on Max. Prepare to party to the state of Florida standards! Hey, how you doing? I'm Terrell from Big Old Bell Media. How you guys doing today? So, Great. so excited. <laughs> uh, you want to introduce yourself? So let us know what you do for the, for the show. Uh, my name's Allison, and I'm the co-creator and uh, writer, director for Teenage Euthanasia. Youth and euthanasia. I feel like I'm trying to get that right all the time. <laughs> euthanasia. <Yeah. laughs> and I'm Alyssa Nutting, and I'm the other co-creator, writer, director, teenage euthanasia. Okay, so I, I, I've seen the show, um, and I'm, you're all right. Yeah. Like, um, <laughs> g give me an idea of like what kind of inspires you guys to kind of make this the way that it is, and, and and I guess the choice of the animation that you that you chose as well. Um, I mean, we had to make this show. There was not another one that we were as excited to do it. It just was, um, we wanted to deal with Florida. We wanted to deal with mother-daughter relationships, um, intergenerational trauma. Um, death. Death, um, beauty standards, <laughs> girls' sexuality. Right. You know, this was the show. And, and then in a sci-fi, um, supernatural way as well. Um, and then the style just seemed to kind of, uh, we ended up meeting this girl, Abby Jame, during our development process, and this sort of was an outgrowth of her, she's a comic book artist, and it was an outgrowth of her style that we kind of messed with her with, mm -hmm. and, um, and then we just knew it, we wanted it to be really colorful to sort of fit the Florida vibe, and, mm -hmm. uh, we wanted the people to be kind of people-y because we're really into the like hair, makeup, wardrobe of a lot of the female characters and we really have a lot of fun um, messing with that all the time. Yeah, we really needed it to look different just since these were kind of characters who are all um, outsiders in their own way. We wanted, we wanted that to sort of be visually portrayed to that this is this is sort of a askance askew view of a of a particular alternative family <laughs> um, obviously not based on anybody's like you know, actual <laughs> lives because nobody uh, the, i guess like after watching the first season um and watching a little bit of the second season too what is actually the extent of our main character's powers here? Because it seems like she could just kind of just do whatever, like, whatever the story calls for. I think she doesn't know is a big part of it. Like, she's been granted this, and she just doesn't understand that. We actually deal with it a little bit second season, mm -hmm. where she doesn't really know what she can do, and that does happen first season, too. She She's kind of finding her way. Um, uh, and so I think it is a character, you know, I'm not a complete superhero expert, but yeah, she's a character that doesn't really understand her powers right. at all and has very little interest in learning about herself in that way. Like, she just can't be bothered to master them or, you know, she's never going to have like a training montage right. to like get better at them. It just, she's too lazy. Yeah, I mean, I think there's, I think wisdom, you know, is one of the only limitations um, <laughs> of her powers. You know, she's not um, gonna sort of become wise or smart or generous. Um, but other than that, she can kind of do anything. Yeah. Uh, you were talking about just kind of the, the mother-daughter relationship and there's, you know, a, a person with a mom and a, and a sister mm. and their relationship where they could just never seem to get along or we'll get on the same page <laughs> really kind of hits the mark on that in, the, in this show, uh, Trophy, uh, her, she has a lot of high expectations for her daughter and kind of trying to make her, kind of mold her into to her image here. Um, and she's just not cool. I mean, that's just, that's just <laughs> the, the bottom line of it. Uh, you know, we, we have an episode where she's she's pretty much on probation to, uh, you know, live a different life that she she doesn't want to. Um, and then, of course, her her brother, who was voiced by Tim Tim Robinson, who was absolutely freaking hilarious. So <laughs> the best. The best. The can't can't best. get enough of that show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, g give me an idea. Like I said, we're being the creative. How much of the input you had on like the voice the voices here like who who you wanted to play who for this for the show i mean yeah we we i mean we we chose mm -hmm. the voices for the show um and you know we were really excited about tim i had known mm -hmm. it was before his show came out right. when we cast him and i just had heard about him from a friend and he just seemed like the perfect um 
Pete. He just, mm -hmm. and he, because on his show, he's so aggro, and on ours, he's so <laughs> beta. So it's like, he does scream, and when he screams, it's always funny, and we have to, like, mute ourselves because it's so, so funny. And, like, personally, whenever he laughs at the mm -hmm. script is, like, the best day I've ever had. That he yeah. finds our show funny is a huge compliment mm -hmm. to uh, me all the time. Yeah, yeah, that's... The highest praise, I think. <laughs> uh, we, 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 we're talking about the mother-daughter, also the father, mother-son relationship and that yes. weird situation that they have going on there <laughs> where he wants to, I, can't, I really can't tell if he just wants to spend time with her, like where they just didn't have like a relationship at all and then now as an adult he, he wants to be closer to her. Uh, I, I guess what, what was the, the thought and the exploration for that? Yeah, I mean... You know, so often I think in, in, you know, shows and stories you see like, um, you know, women like really trying to win the favor of a man um, and, you know, like pursuing a man or, you know, doing things to, to kind of like change themselves or, or you know, please please a man and in our, in our universe um, it, it's just a matriarchy um, and, you know, we we needed sort of um, the the male character to not be able to get enough of his mama. Um, you know, he he really um, wants as much of Baba as as he can get, and Baba just wants um, a little bit of time alone and space. <laughs> so it's like the classic anxious attachment versus avoidant attachment right. dance. You know, be, between the two of them. Um, and you know he he really you know you you're not sure like if he wants to you know marry her <laughs> if he you know just wants to like you said um, you know have a lot of wonderful mother son you know friend dates you don't quite know right. but you do know that he wants every second he can get. Yeah, you said uh, Baba her, her her moment just to sneak away and play solitaire with her friend. <laughs> Absolutely hilarious. Um, you know, obviously, you know, we always want to get this into, you know, a, a third season. When it comes to a lot of adult swim shows, it seems like it's just so far in between before you know anything. Like, you know, like you have to come to one of these like Comic Con to really find out anything. Mm -hmm. um, I guess until this actually happens, you don't know if you're getting into a season three territory. We don't. Um, I mean, yeah. I think feels like hopeful. I feel very hopeful about it. Um, it's always hard to you know get from season to season on anything but i mean i feel like you know we're, we're built our our audiences has built from you know feels like it's it's a momentum to the show so i'm hopeful about it and we have so many stories we want to tell and things we didn't get to yeah. this season that like it's the show is so easy and fun to write and make that you know it would just be great to keep going you don't I, want to pull the plug on euthanasia <laughs> <laughs> have, have you guys talked about merchandise yet so yes, yes we, we have a lot of things we'd love to try to make and do and we do have some things up right mm -hmm. now that yeah. we, uh, you know, pre -sale. there is some pre-sale. If you go to our Instagram, you can see some things that we've designed that we, a lot of things from the show. Um, and so, we, you know, yeah, I feel like there's an endless amounts of stuff that we could do and, you know, we have a lot of ideas because we, we design a lot of the clothes for, that the characters wear on the show and it'd be great to see them come to life. Yeah, I really want to make biker shorts that have beetles coming out of the crotch. <laughs> That's kind of like my, one of my dreams. You'll know she's made it when those exist. Yes. Yeah. Um, what is, I guess, the... <sighs> Like you said, you had a lot of stories, um, but I guess overall from the first season till now, well, I, I guess can't really get into season two because we haven't seen it, uh, but uh, th overall the first season, like what was like an episode that really just like really hit for you that you really, I think everybody kind of gravitated to? Um, that I think it was our, our episode is called Adventures in Beetle Sitting. Mm -hmm. And it was like when the Beatles uh, get taken out of Trophy because Trophy's going on a date and she doesn't want to have them clogging up her parts. <laughs> and, you know, and we get to see the, the Beatles uh, world. And, and at the same time, like Annie is trying to... Uh, you know, hang out with, make a friend. <laughs> um, I don't know. That mm. one for me just is really rich in both in terms of like using Trophy's powers, Annie's vulnerability, Trophy's bad decision making. Mm. Um, it also is really cool animation as Trophy kind of falls apart and she kind of becomes like a schmoo. Um, mm. as, and, and then, you know, 
yeah, that's yeah. Been one of my favorites. There's an episode where um, Baba and Trophy um, go on this like competitive uh, prison challenge reality TV spring break show after they're arrested because Baba gave Trophy a bad bang trim and it <laughs> leaves Pete and Annie home alone and um, Pete tries to help Annie learn how to cry and you sort of um, learn a lot about why Annie can't cry and what happens if she does. Yeah. Look, I, I, so far I'm loving the show. Um, you know, you might need some uh, some some extra influence to, to really get into it sometimes. <laughs> but it definitely, definitely, uh, I definitely love the show so far, and I definitely love the fact that Adult Swim allows you ties to take risk with this type of show. Like you know, because any I, I don't know as far as like networks would go, like where it would land, but mm -hmm. I, I definitely love the fact that you kind of just where, do your, your creativity here and just do whatever you want. So thank you so much for, for bringing this. Uh, thank you for doing this interview with me today. And, thank you. Uh, hope thank to see you. you guys. Enjoy yeah. your Comic-Con. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Too. Thank you. Too. It was a pleasure.